Hello there, and thanks for taking the time to hear a little bit about our exciting degree program called MINT. MINT stands for Marketing, Innovation and New Technology. Now, I'm awfully sorry that I can't be giving you this talk in person and showing you around our nice business school in DCU, but I really look forward to meeting you in person in September. My name is Peter Robbins, and I am the chair of the MINT program. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking you through our program. I am a former marketing director and ultimately a global director of innovation excellence for one of the biggest firms in the world, GlaxoSmithKline. And I think that you'll find a lot in DCU, people who combine a very high level of professional experience with academic excellence. So when we're teaching you, you get a sense that we have really been in the trenches and not just in the ivory tower. So first I'm gonna tell you why and how we developed Mint to be aligned to the contemporary concerns of business. I'll run through a few interesting trends in business that will show you the importance of innovation and marketing and that the, that importance has never been higher. People who shine in business at creativity and innovation will get hired faster paid more and promoted more quickly. Then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the course, what you'll be studying and how the four years of the program build together to create a whole which is greater than the sum of the parts. And then finally, I'm gonna tell you what you need to do next to apply. These are the undergraduate degree courses we have in DCU. And as I say, I'm going to talk to you about DC 240. Now, What's going on in business at the moment? If you were wondering what's keeping CEOs awake at night, it is in fact, they are worried a great deal about innovation, about their preparedness for innovation, about the pace of innovation. So we find in surveys from McKinsey, for instance, in 2019, that 84% of CEOs are worried they see innovation as their biggest challenge. And then when they are asked how many of them believe that their company has the capability to deal with this challenge, we find disappointingly that only 6% of firms think that their company has the know-how to win at innovation. This gives a great opportunity for people like you who are going to be trained up to be the next cohort, the next generation of experts who will know more at innovation and be able to do it to a higher level of proficiency than ever before. These days in business, there's a term you may have heard called the VUCA environment. It was a term coined by in the Gulf War in the 1990s to describe the conditions faced by American war fighter pilots. The acronym stands for volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. But this is the new normal now in business. A every industry has significant clouds on the horizon although possibly some great silver linings behind them, but the threats are significant. We have in most cases increasing protectionism. We have a level of competition that's unprecedented, hyper competition. We have a higher level of regulation. We have uh, a an emphasis on sustainability that is higher than ever before and has to go beyond just storytelling or greenwashing. Then we have businesses that are in some place on a continuum of total disruption with the deluge of new technology from cloud, omnichannel, but now voice and facial recognition technologies coming through. We have the issue also that legacy businesses who may have had a very strong market share and international presence can suddenly be capsized and overtaken by more nimble, agile, innovative competitors who offer the consumer a richer customer experience. Then we have issues, local issues like Brexit, which is a very serious issue for many businesses. And we have the most pressing current issue of COVID-19 and the response of companies and organizations and governments to this existential threat. We also have power shifting from the supplier to the consumer at a higher rate than ever before. And the internet where people might browse offline, but shop online, essentially means that people are buying on price, price, and price. 
and the internet drives price right down to the bottom. People like Jeff Bezos are looking across the spectrum at all sorts of industries saying, your margin is my opportunity. Where he believes there could be super normal profits, Amazon will go in there and change the way the market behaves. And they have been extraordinarily successful uh, in doing this in the past. The other issue that's happening is that new product development, which is the outcome of innovation, is coming to the market much more quickly than ever was before. And companies have this paradox or this um, tightrope they have to walk to either innovate or liquidate. Those companies that don't innovate become very quickly irrelevant and are brutally swept aside. Now we have businesses that are absolutely obsessed with big data and data analytics. So there's the analysis of data, there's the potential of data to predict things, and we're seeing a lot of that in the COVID-19 current emergency. And ultimately, by predicting things happen, that are likely to happen, the data can provide some sort of prescription. So, but all of the businesses in industries, if you're looking at the same data, they're gonna come up with the same new products and stuff. So we need to prioritize creativity and innovation. And in a lot of the literature, this capacity of businesses to be operationally excellent with data and every other operation, and also entrepreneurial, experimental, imaginative, creative, dexterous, agile, this is a difficult thing for companies to do. And this is how we have, how we have aligned our course to help you figure out how to manage these variables in a company. It's so difficult that some of the books on it have these exotic titles like Grabbing Lightning. So if we think about Ireland, for instance, we have a business landscape in Ireland of which 99% of all of the number of businesses, 99% of businesses, are SME businesses. That's businesses of 250 people or less. That 99% of businesses, within there, 92% of those are micro businesses, which are one to 10 people. Now we do have 1% of our total businesses that are foreign direct investment or multinational organizations, and they employ 30% of the people and deliver 30% of the uh, GDP. So they definitely punch above their weight. But if we look at our own indigenous businesses, there are a couple of things we can measure around innovation. We can measure the intensity of innovation and the productivity. So the intensity is how much money companies spend on new products and services. And the productivity is what they get for that. And we find that in both cases, those things are low. Then we also find that indigenous Irish businesses tend to overestimate their digital readiness. And in fact, when we look at a sort of a digital IQ report that's objective, we find that those skills are actually underdeveloped in most Irish SMEs. So that brings us to all of those things collide. A real high emphasis on innovation, a really high emphasis on creativity and on technology to say, what if we created a, a full degree that gives people the essentials of business, overlays that with the tool of creativity, a knowledge of technology, and a capacity to work in an agile, flexible, dexterous way. And that's what the Mint degree is all about. And that's that's what makes it probably the most exciting degree we have in the university. So if you were to study Mint, you become industry ready when you graduate, because not only are most of our modules taught by people who've been in business, but you will have spent a year in business on the third year, which is our intra program. You will be a proven high academic achiever. The program has been focused and tailored all around the needs of business. Um, the university itself is 17,000 people with five different faculties, all studying different things you'll be coming across, thrown in contact with in teams with people who are studying all sorts of different stuff. And we have a lot of guest speakers. We have a lot of um, business projects that we work with. You'll be interacting with business topics and people throughout from the very beginning. So this is a program that's really been growing and industry interest in it is phenomenal. And we have, I as the program chair have the good fortune to be receiving calls from the um, loads of companies who want to come in and speak, especially to the Mint students, because they're the students that have been coached a great deal in 
creativity and innovation. So we're now moving to a point set up of possibly somewhere between 450 and 460, but for the last two years it has been 451 points. And we've got over 300 people now in the workplace who've graduated from Mint. So our ambition is to develop marketeers and innovators to work in high tech industries. Um, in year three, there is an intra placement, which is a full year paid credit bearing placement in industry. The DCU have a, an experience of this and expertise that goes beyond all of the other universities. We've been doing this for over two decades. So we'll place you in a firm, either a small firm where you'll be doing lots of different things or a large firm where you might tend to focus on one thing in particular. So it's a four year degree program. It is unique in Ireland with its focus on innovation and technology, multidisciplinary. The third year is a work placement and we end up having people working in all sorts of businesses, digital businesses. We have a focus on biotechnology because that's a very high tech, very well paid um, industry and sector in which Ireland has a particular advantage. And our people during Intrap go to work in companies like J&J, &J, Colgate Palmolive, Microsoft, Deloitte, Enterprise Ireland, KPMG. So, and also some go to work abroad. Um, so this is a very exciting thing where after two years of university study, people go into the workplace and they get to test their skills and see what the pressures of businesses are really like. And then they come back to us. We take a lot of feedback from students to see actually were the things we were teaching you. Did they stand you in good stead when you went into the business and were you able to cope and lead in certain situations in the business? So we've constantly have a dynamic feedback loop to see maybe should we focus more on one thing or another, but the inter program is a very essential part. Then people on that third year can choose to take a summer school in China or South Korea uh, or more closer to home in, in Europe. And then we can send you uh, or you can choose to avail of the third year studying abroad in Illinois or in uh, Arizona State University or in every in France. So I think the reason that I would choose Mint, I think if you just if you were to choose business studies, that is for people who want to push the levers of an existing business. If you choose Mint, there's a focus on enterprise, on entrepreneurship, on innovation, on imagination on creativity. And uh, it's those people we want. We want the imaginative people who see themselves either forging a path, possibly in their own business, but being the champions of innovation, whether they work for a state agency or whether they work for a global organization. In the stuff, the stuff that we do from very early on, we're sending people out to hackathons. We get involved in the startup weekend. We have, um, a, an in, a university startup program that helps prime new businesses and accelerate their development and give them funding. We have a lot of societies in which you can get involved. These are just the sort of commercial ones. We have a marketing and innovation society. We have one about learning how to speak in public or speak easy. And we have had a long and successful track record. In fact, you could say we are the all blacks of an actus, which is the university version of young social innovators but it's a little bit bigger than that. It's a big global university level um, tournament or, that works around the world. DCU have won for Ireland maybe four out of the last six years. We're involved a lot in the business ecosystem, certainly around the city and a little bit around the country. But for Startup Week in Dublin, we sent 600 of our students out to meet entrepreneurs, to hear them talk about their product or their idea or experience or their proposition. We got them to meet the local enterprise boards, Enterprise Ireland, to see the ecosystem through which Ireland supports its innovators. And we brought in businesses. In second year, as a unique part of our program, we have engaged with Dublin's Ireland's leading design agency called Dolman, and they come in and produce deliver a full module about design thinking and innovation that's very industry focused and very enriching for our students. As I say, we've won prizes for an Actus. The Actus team have gone all over the world and have 
done extremely, extraordinarily successful. So our Mint graduates go into all sorts of companies, Jemison, Microsoft, Accenture, Pernod Ricard, Google, you name it. So in summary, Mint is a wonderful degree to take. Um, as I say, my name is Peter Robbins. You'll find some extra details on the web. If you want to talk to me, um, you'll find me easily on the DCU website, Peter Robbins at dcu.ie. This picture of Gráinne Byrne would have been an intro to Gráinne Byrne to talk to you for a minute about her experience now, a brand manager in Heineken, Ireland, but I'm afraid that COVID-19 has thwarted that plan of ours. So you'll find us on dcu.ie, our Facebook page, our Twitter page, and Instagram page. And if you have any further interest or questions or you or your parents have any questions, I would be delighted to answer them. So sorry that I can't do this in person, but I very much forward to either meeting you or hearing from you. Thank you. Bye-bye.